Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, it's a very good opportunity to share my recent research on AI and energy systems. The topic is AI assisted power with dispatch and control. So I have been working on the various perspective of uh, uh, this research ever since 2016. And um, uh, today's talk, I will talk about the idea, how I started this idea and uh, the real world implementations we have developed. And uh, I also build a startup based on some of the technology developed here um, and share some insight we obtained from uh, field employment. A quick outline, uh, I will start with some uh, operational challenges, the power grid facing, and uh, a little bit about the basics about machine learning and AI. Just to start, you know, digging into the idea. And then I will talk about how AI can potentially help to make the life of power system dispatchers easier. Uh, followed by some studies uh, we have done with the real grid and the transition to a very important topic on the safety of AI especially for critical uh, infrastructure like the energy systems. Lastly, I will share uh, some research on uh, transformer and uh, LLMs in energy systems. So the power grid is enters through uh, a profound transformation. As you can see from this picture, this is what the power grid used to be and what is right now. So we have generations and the power are generated from remote areas, transmitted to uh, low centers and customers. We have unidirectional energy flow. Now the power grid is basically becoming a decentralized and a distributed, where we have generation and a load everywhere in the system. So it's essentially a energy internet. So one biggest challenge this cause to the power grid is the dynamics and estimates. We have so many stochastic variables over a big grid. So that is making the operation of the grid very challenging. We have several blackouts. And one of the grand challenges the increase in dynamics and the stochastic in the modern power grid. So this does not leave our system dispatcher a lot of time to make control and dispatch decisions. And we really need to make this process fully automated and fast. So this is the distribution grid. We used to have a unidirectional voltage profile now becomes because of the multi-directional power flow and we are having fluctuating voltage over the grid and that fundamentally change how the grid can be operated. And one of the major reason was this was the majority of the generators synchronous rotating. So we're talking about time steps of minutes, tens of minutes, or tens of seconds. Now everything is inverter, so IBR, inverter-based resources, we're talking about milliseconds. So that's a challenge, and we also have a big opportunity. The big opportunity is the digitization of the grid. So this one shows the prediction of IoT devices across the grid over the next few years. And this was predicted a few years ago. And now even this is very conservative. So I, I see some numbers triple the prediction here. So in six years, I'm going to have 50 billion or even 100 billion IoT devices across the grid. So 
and uh, all devices, you, they use the electricity, right? They generate measurement and we send measurement to the control center or create controllers for operation. And that's the internet traffic, explosive. And then we have uh, smart meters, PMUs, synchronized by GPS across all stage of the power and energy generation, transmission, distribution, and the consumption. So one thing is pretty clear, the digitization is going to be everywhere. And how we can utilize that to address the fundamental challenges aimed by the renewable energy resources is the key. And this is what I have been working on since my master research. So we have a lot of phaser measurement units across the grid, across a wide area, and the grid. Those sensors are synchronized by GPS. And over the past decade, people have been working on how to analyze or how to understand what is going on across the grid. So it's like seeing what is happening, although it might be far from you. So something like a great eye, situation awareness. And when I was doing this research, the one thing challenged me, when I talked to system dispatchers was, this is like cities, right? Previously, I don't see the problem. Now you have very accurate, high sampling rate devices telling me, so this is the problem of the grid. It's very painful because you know what's going on, but you don't know how to make it right. And that research gap is here for a pretty long time. So if you check this uh, loop, we have power grid, we have a lot of sensors, and the sensors generate data. We use that data to create the situation awareness where we do perception, comprehension, and the projection. So everything up to here has been fully automated. But after that, we need system dispatcher to make a decision. Once human is in a loop, it becomes slow because you break the loop. And the actions will take some time. And we talk about we are on a faster and a faster system dynamics. Don't have too much time to address the challenges. So the idea was if I can fully automate this loop so that you give me data, I can tell you what is going on. In the meanwhile, I can tell you how to make it right. So that is the goal. And uh, a brief overview of AI and machine learning. So AI is the broadest term and the subcategory is machine learning where we focus on telling stories or learn from data without being explicitly uh, the rules and the model. And a further subset is deep learning where we use neural network and in particular multiple layers of neural network to address a challenge. And this is what uh, happened over the past uh, decade. So I think those stories are very familiar. And recently we have uh, the chat GPT, everybody is using that. So several observations from this event were uh, previously we were generating labors while was working at NEC. So we hired many grad and grad students to label the images in order to learn. And with AlphaGo, AlphaZero, so they basically learn from interacting with the environment. So the entire research or application is heading toward self-supervised or weekly supervised learning. So then the idea was, can we do something similar for the power grid? So which is a Lexus system, a lot of opportunities, but in the meanwhile, a lot of security safety concerns. 
which is very difficult to change. And we have developed decades of classical computational tools, softwares, and models to control and understand the power grid. So the idea was, can we sort of combine the most advanced machine learning AI ideas with our classical long time developed tools to create AI agents that can learn on its own with little or no supervision by human beings. And uh, a quick review of uh, different categories of machine learning. I, I think some of you may already know this, but this is for the unknown. Uh, so supervised learning in, in a simple sentence would be, I have data, I have a label, I'm trying to learn some model and the rules based on labeled data. Unsupervised learning, I have uh, data without labels. Like if I give you the major US city uh, from the west coast, east coast, and the central part of US, the housing price, I don't have to tell you this is San Francisco, but from data you can tell, right? So learning without label and the reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is very much like the control system where you try to do something and you observe the result. And based on the observation, you try to determine what you need to do next. It's pretty much useful in a, a very dynamic and a stochastic environment where and computer program can try things out, watch the errors, and determine what to do. And the deep learning is actually uh, where we use multiple layers of a neural network. It can be supervised, unsupervised. And my research mainly focusing on the combination of deep learning and reinforcement learning. So AI has a lot of applications in energy systems. So from the power generation, we use AI to predict the solar power generation for the next day, for the next hour, within cameras, in past data. In the transmission grid, we're trying to locate where a fault is, whether our transformer has some issues, uh, distribution. So we look at uh, intelligent reasoning and the monitoring of equipment and the self heating control capabilities of the grid. And from the end user, we do non-intrusive load monitoring, their commercial product. We also try to predict the load. And with the deep reinforcement learning and the large language models, the new trend is we were focusing on monitoring, diagnosis, Forecasting, we are moving forward to reasoning, planning, both short term, long term control, online decision making. So, the ultimate goal is to make this fully autonomous. And this is a comparison of the, the classical way. So, we learn power systems, energy system rules. You ought to set up models. So when you give the rules and the data, a computer program try to figure out what is going to happen, what can you do. So the new way is data centric or hybrid, where we feed data and we feed the observations. So sort of answers. The program is set to figure out those rules which can be very complicated. But once we figure out those rules, we can use that to guide our future research. So that's the difference of automatic and autonomous, where in autonomous you learn, you improve, and you adapt. So over the past years, whenever I talk to a system dispatcher or power system engineers, one question I got asked often was, 
why do we want to use AI? The grade has been running okay. What is the key advantage of having AI and the machine learning for the energy system? So I've been trying to answer that question uh, along with my research and the uh, field deployment project. So here are three reasons or advantages why it's flexibility. Previously, you have fixed rules. Now we have stochastic variables across the system. We really want the system to be flexible and continuous learning. So we are adding DRs, renewables across the grid every day, every single day. So the grid is evolving pretty fast. If you have a fixed rule, you have to update that rule frequently. And the machine learning, we can keep learning and adapt our program to handle the challenges. And another benefit is there is no need for explicit models. Also, we can still use it, but it's not a must. And that can bring a lot of opportunities. For example, people working on communication, they can now work on power grid and other majors as well because of the um, power representation power of the uh, machine learning and the AI. So the gap in one sentence would be, we are in lack of approaches, which can synthesize a massive amount of data and measurement across a wide area to best allocate the resources. And that's what my research is trying to address. So here the goal is trying to close the loop. I'm basically using a, a deep reinforcement learning as the core and combine that with models, with other machine learning approaches to make this process fully automated. And the idea is you give me data, I'll tell you what to do within a second. I'll skip this part about uh, uh, deep learning because of time constraint and the reinforcement learning my dog. So the training process of my dog is really the reinforcement learning process, my real dog. So initially I'm trying to ask my dog to enter the crate, very difficult, try months. One time he succeed, give him milk ball, right? So that's a sort of reinforcement. And after that, you may still have no idea, but somehow she realized if I do something and if you say something, I do it, I'll get a reward. And next time, still, but better. So I'm giving a reward every time she can succeed, successfully finish my, my task. So over a long time, you can expect that she's doing very well. So now, even she just saw me, I don't have to really pronounce the word, she will enter the grade. So that's the power of reinforcement. Not going to talk about all the technical details, but the basic idea is a, a computer program, typically called agent, can talk to or uh, interact with the environment, try something, receive a feedback, and over and over again become pretty well. And this is one simple example to illustrate the idea. This is the, the pretty easy mouse and cliff, the game. So the mouse start from here, trying to catch the cheese without touching the cliff in shortest distance. So you can use various ways, algorithm to fulfill this task. And the one way would be if I can create a table on one dimension, that's the location of the mouse. The other dimension, that's the action. And uh, the numbers, the numbers is the cash you're going to get at certain location by taking an action, right? Then the game becomes very easy. You start from here, you pick the most rewarding, 
and you will finish the job. And the real world is much more complicated than this. So thanks to the representation power of deep neural network, we can create a deep neural network to approximate this table. And we can keep doing experiment to train this deep neural network. So wherever you are, the deep neural network is going to tell you, if you do this, you will get the biggest reward. And then you finish the job. So that's the major idea. So essentially, we are trying to develop an agent that can achieve a human level task. So where the reinforcement learning give you the framework, those loops of training and the deep learning will handle the mechanics. And when we combine these two, we can do quite some good things. So this is the first example uh, myself and my team uh, try to develop. It's a very classical problem in smart grid. You have voltage fluctuations and we know if the voltage is too high, your light will get burned. If too low, it will dim. You won't be able to see anything. So one of the critical uh, function of power grid dispatcher would be how to maintain the voltage at all nodes within a certain range. And you have uh, some resources to do that. You can adjust the generators. You have uh, shunt elements, shunt capacitors, reactors. You also have some transformers. Those are the resources you can do. Remember the goal is within a wide area, you give me data, I will tell you what is the best way of allocate those resources to solve your system level problems. So that's the goal. So this can be actually mapped to the framework I just talked about. And we did that. Using this loop, and we find it works very well. So one thing about the reward, because it's very important. So you can imagine that the reward will guide the agent to do something that is right. So here, this is the simplest way of defining the reward, where if the agent takes some action and make the voltage right, I'll give a big reward. If he does something that partially solves the problem, I'm going to give a smaller reward or small penalty. And if it does something really crazy, I will just penalize the agent once so that he can remember for a long time. So with that guidance, the agent is going to master the voltage control pretty well. Not going to dig into the technical details. Uh, so one thing about a very good feature about this is we start from scratch. So initially, the agent has no idea about what resources, if I dispatch, will make the voltage right. I mean, from uh, the power grade, power system point of view, we have been learning the modeling and the control analysis approaches so that our engineers know what we do will cause what effect to the grid, but the agent does not. So the agent starts purely random resources, but it observes, it grow, adapt, and finally master the problem pretty well. So this is one set of the very first result when I started this research. So the x-axis is the data samples I saw, and the y-axis is the total return. So basically, if you get a 100, that's perfect, that's a, a plus. If you don't do so well, you get a 90 something, that's still A, right? So, and it degrades as performance. So from here, you can see that's a grow of intelligence. It basically grows. And once I pass, 
the agent to see 10,000 samples, I start fixing all the parameters of the agent and we try testing. So out of 10,000, 9,998 samples, I solved the problem in one iteration and for two, two iterations. So that's like, you give me data, I tell the problem, you do it to solve it. And that's the growth of intelligence. So this is a numerical example on, you know, how this works. This was at very initial stage. So I pass this data. So the yellow ones indicate the node with voltage problems. I pass this to the AI agent. The AI agent will tell, okay, please do this, adjust. And that's a system state. So some problem get solved, right? This new problem appear. Okay, this is nice. So new problem start. So I'll pass that data to the agent. Agent says, try this. So boom, all problem solved, no more yellow. So, and as time goes by, I go to here. So that's the data passed to the agent. The agent says, do this. I directly solve the problem. That's very nice. And you can see, I only pass a vector, right? Agent has no knowledge of the topology of the grid, the parameters, the generators, location of your resources. We don't, we don't need that. And a lot of times in power grid, we'll have to deal with hybrid uh, categories of variables, so integers and continuous ones. So there are different algorithms we can utilize to solve this. So one approach is called the DDPG, so deep deterministic policy gradient. So it can handle continuous uh, control variables. So I do the same thing. And you can see in the testing phase, all the samples, all problems were perfectly solved. And if you compare this, this is the Illinois portion of the US grade. And we try the discrete and a continuous control. So this is a very interesting one. So you can see in the training phase, so the first algorithm as well, because there's not so many negative reward, but here you can see many negative reward, right? But in the inference, in the online testing phase, this one does much better. And the reason is that this algorithm has more exploration. So you don't hurry to push the agent to grow. So it's better to learn more in the training phase so that you can do much better in the future. And the power grid, as you can see, is a, a big graph. We have transmission lines, lightnings, operations. We open it, and the grid can be isolated. So it's a change in topology. So one of the major concern behind the AI, where the power engineer has is if I have a changing grade with varying topologies, where your AI be able to generalize well enough to handle the problem. So we have done a lot of work. So we learned, well, we are training the AI to randomly add topology changes. And the AI agent can do pretty well. So topology problem can be handled. So this is um, another application. We have a you know a grade, and a certain portion of the grade is overloaded. The system is very simple. So power grid dispatcher, as you will know, in order to reduce the power flow, the current, you reduce 
here, you increase here, and you will be able to do that, right? And even if you have a fault here, you'll do the same. So now, we get this way, right? And if we have overflow here, it's not so obvious. Traditionally, we have approaches, sensitivity factors, but the grid is going more decentralized. The control decision is more difficult. And with AI, we can do that, the same framework. So we actually deployed one of this to assist the system dispatcher to relieve overflows wherever you have in 20 milliseconds. And one of the fundamental problem in power grid, and it can be extended to many applications is called the AC. So AC is the alternating current. AC optimal power flow. It's I have this, this many resources. How could I best plan my grid so that I either run the cheapest cost, lowest loss. So it's optimization problem. And you have to do that online, right? So it's a non-convex. So there is no guarantee that you will get a solution in minutes. And then now everything is moving so fast. We need to do that very well in a faster period, short amount of time. So this is where I combine the other learning. This is like a teacher, the imitation learning. I combine the imitation learning with the deep reinforcement learning to hard start the learning process. And I try that on different systems. So this is the process how the AI agent is adjusting the generation from the generators in order to reduce the system cost. And it, so this is the result of this idea with California wind, Kaiser wind. As you can see, it's very dense. So every few seconds you get a data sample and it fluctuates. So the idea is traditionally we do every five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Now I do second by second. Whether you use it or not, that's another story, but the decision is there. So I always give you a reference. So this is what your grid can do to achieve the best performance. And that happens within a second. So this is uh, the one AI competition. So the idea is that we can change the topology of the grid without touching any other element. We don't need to do demand response. We don't need to ask people to stop using the load to so shut off your AC. We don't need to redispatch our generation just by changing the topology of the power grid. That's one of the biggest resources we have in, in the energy system. So here, the same thing. This one, we have a cascading outage, blackout. Just by opening two lines, the same operating condition, the system running smooth without any problem. So this is great. However, the challenge is where to open, where to change the topology. And if you check, the solution space explodes. It's a very difficult decision problem. You have tons of constraints. And we write the equations just for this problem. This is something you only want to look one. The AI and this with modifications, this runs half an hour. So by the time you figure out, oh, this is what I need to do, really is already done. Oh, <laughs> people already move on with this. So 
we can get a solution in roughly 18 milliseconds. And without human intervention, we run the system for half a month without even touching the system. Everything runs autonomously. Open source the code, if you're interested, you can check. For time considerations, I will not talk about details. And um, so we have a lot of elements in the power grid, and we have more data, right? So here the idea is, can we design algorithms that looking at the data, trying to figure out what the right model of the grid is? It used to be very challenging, but AI has that potential, a similar framework and a load. So this is one example where we, we collect data from the field and the learning process, the AI is trying to figure out a set of differential equations, what are the right parameters? So this is for the load. And the real-time control can also do that. And it should show some benefit. And in a certain condition, we can even prove that. Mm -hmm. Always we can guarantee stability of a dynamic system. And when the system grow, we can use multi-agent. So each agent communicates a little information. Together, they can make the grid better. Developed um, uh, software, which I don't have time. So my partner was pretty uh, brave to try on this critical infrastructure, AI power. So this was the first system, real system, where we uh, got a chance to deploy that AI assisted software. So the system uh, peak load is 3.5 gigawatt. So that's like a load of uh, uh, maybe several uh, big cities. And our AI agent needs to communicate with the production system in the real world. So this is where we train, deploy AI agent to interact with the existing energy management system of the power grid. And then we try to compare AI power solution with the traditional. So this is the without. I remember I was sitting in the control room right before the pandemic. So this is a without. It's very promising. I don't have time to cover everything, but the idea is on top of the existing optimization, the AI can bring in 6% improvement on the system loss while mitigating voltage violations and power flow violations. So that translates to minutes. So then my focus was how big a system can the AI, so can the AI scale? So this is by far the biggest system I've done and based on this literature, this is the biggest system. So this is a demo, offline demo of an online system. So the idea is I have a power grade and this power grade, as you can see, has 4,000 nodes, so about 600 generators. Think about the dimension of the problem. And the system is running online. This is offline version. So created the four steps. So I get a snapshot of this system. So choose one system snapshot and try to add some system thought. Consider that as a game. You're trying to break the system down. And when you do that, you will have system problem, a lack of seven gigawatt power, right? With multiple 
system constraint violated. And even for the system dispatcher, they won't be able to do anything to resolve this in faster time. In 44 milliseconds, I tell the 600 generators, this is what you need to do. And if you do that, the problem is solved. So this is by far before and not after. So this is by far um, this technology, uh, the biggest system this technology can do. So just to give you an idea, it can handle the complexity of a major regional power grid. And then deploy this to distribution grid. So much lower voltage, where we have more renewables, right? Then the challenge changed. The challenge changed because the AI agent does not have an environment to interact. So how do we do that? In, in a year, we developed a surrogate model. So we collecting real data from the field, a training, a surrogate model, and the surrogate model interact with the AI agent. And in 2021, we closed the loop. For the real system, we actually let AI to control. And we have several observer engineers sitting in the control room, checking the difference. And it's a tremendous amount of work. It works pretty well. So comparison, I'm not going to cover. Two major conclusions. One is in terms of optimization, AI does better because of the lack of a good model. The existing system try and error, try and error. So you don't know what will happen if you do something. So the only thing is you be more conservative. You try, you observe, then you go further. But the AI, before I'm doing this, I can predict this is exactly what is going to happen. So now the software runs at 13 distribution rate in the control. So safety is uh, very, very critical. So the power grid is uh, such a mission critical infrastructure that we can't tolerate blackout. And if you do something improper, something wrong, the power grid can be done affecting thousands, tens of thousands, or even millions of people. So that's why it's moving slow because security, reliability is the key. So and AI, I talk about AI, when we try to do exploration, we really don't know if this can actually break. Right? If you are communicating with a simulation software, that's, that's fine. If you are driving a car, you cannot tolerate failure. You cannot hit something, but there is no guarantee unless you do something. So for example, so this is, this region is called undesired. A lot of time it's the system is running in undesired mode. Outside is unsafe, which you don't want to want the system to run in. Here is the perfect. So a lot of times we want to bring the system state from undesired but safe too perfect, right? But there is no guarantee that you jump out of the, the circle and then come back. And we definitely need to guarantee that. So this is one example I gave during the learning phase of such AI unit on the IEEE Bonifa system. So as you can see, there really is no guarantee unless you do something. So there can be a uh, uh, several ways, constraint optimization, uh, control barrier functions, constraint the mark of decision process. So the previous demo I shown you was using the constraint mark of decision process. So this is something borrowed from the control. So control barrier function, the advantage, this is a, a faster growing research area. And uh, the key idea is I can train a neuron, 
control variable function so that you give me the state and the control, I tell you whether the system can go safe or unsafe, right? And this is a, a one to three bus system. And the X axis is the number of the, the ID of the buses. And this is the safe range. Wherever you see a red one that's attack, say during the training phase, this node become unsafe. You can see there are many unsafe, right? And then I deploy safety algorithms, you don't see red. So safety guaranteed, it's a growing research and very important for a mission critical system like power, power grid. And the edge intelligence, right now we have a lot of data. Data are transmitted to control center for processing. But data is exploding right everywhere. And that's obviously the, not the best way. So the best way, as I can see, is that we want to handle data at the places where they are generated. But right now, the infrastructure is not there. So, and my research tries to do that. So from uh, hardware, software, code design, perspective. So the idea is that we want to make AI runnable, running on edge devices, cheap, portable, low cost. So that is one research direction. Um, time will not cover. So blockchain plus AI. So that's really AI over the edge. We can do demand control and transactive energy. So one critical issue for deployment of AI in the power grid is there is always a, a hidden assumption in deployment and learning process, which is we assume the distribution of the data does not change much. And we assume that the model does not change much. But when those assumptions are violated, so the AI model will fail. So how to make sure you have a maintenance-free software that can do it autonomously. So the basic idea is, and uh, you probably know the concept drift, the model drift, data drift. So change is the only constant, right? Whatever you learn today may not work tomorrow and less likely in a month, in a week. So the idea how we deploy this is we deploy two agents in parallel. So one agent handles the inference, the online decision, and the one agent consistently learning with the new data. And then once in a while, for example, twice in a day, I will check the performance of the learning one, evaluate the performance of the inferencing one, either switch or replace. That goes hand in hand. And that strategy proved in practice to be quite successful. And my team also started doing some work on life language model. You see probably the second lot, uh, the last slide. So, uh, which is really hot uh, research area. So this is the one you write in the paper um, where I lead. So the idea is that transformer and uh, pretty helpful, powerful in handling natural language processing, chat GPT, right? So how, how about power? So when low hanging fruit was, we can use this model to predict the load all the renewable generation, and that can help the decision making. And we tried, and we compared the transformer model with the other machine learning model and uh, algorithms. And the result was a little surprise. And I haven't defined the one application that it beat the rest of the algorithms. 
and we try to dig into the reason why. So one of obvious reason is that it's very powerful for multimodal, right? So when you have data in text, in image, and you use that data to do the prediction or training, it may work well. But here is purely numerical data. And I haven't seen this working better than the other algorithms. <laughs> Still ongoing research. So now one other goal is that we want to train an AI agent that can be multitasking. We we'll talk about several applications. One AI agent can handle a few applications or challenges. So last slide. So where the research and the, my vision goes, I'm trying, essentially I'm trying to combine the eyes with the mind. So the great eyes with the great mind. Um, and I envision that in the future, power grid and the energy system is going to be running controlled by robots or cooperative robots. That will make the grid fully autonomous. And my research is trying to fulfill that vision. Thank you.